Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Here's another spy options update for week 43. Here we have Monday through Friday for this week, 23rd to the 27th. And as you can see, it's pretty much continuing to decline from the previous week. Uh, basically all five days except Tuesday was a down day. But the nice thing about options is you can make money even if the market is going down. On Monday, I made $235. Tuesday was the only update, so I had some bullish trades in here. Uh, Wednesday, I made $136. Thursday, $81. This one call here got automatically liquidated at market close, unfortunately. If I had closed this earlier, I probably would have saved like $10 or $20 off that. And then finally, Friday today, it was mostly bearish trades. I made four today, so I'll go over what those are, and that's $105. So overall for the week, that is going to be $895 which is more than usual and represents a 3% gain from the previous week. Meanwhile, the S&P 500 is down 2.5% this week for a total return of 7.4%. So here's what the graph looks like. And you can see since about week 29, my option returns versus the SPY have been diverging quite a bit. So even if I remain very conservative with my trades going forward, meaning I can sell very out of the money spreads and having tight stop losses for them, then even if I do that for the rest of the year, I'll probably still end up doing pretty well relative to just buying and holding the index. So today is Friday the 27th. The market is now closed. Here are the trades I made today. For this challenge, I'll just be going over the SPY, of course. I started the day with this one here at 9.34. Local time, I was bullish for this trade because I thought the market had maybe temporarily found a bottom, but that was not the case. So I earned $23 for entering two of these positions. But uh, shortly after, you can see at 9.56 and 10.06, I got out of these positions. I sold them and I took a bit of a loss because I paid $28 and $38 to get out of that position. And instead of being bullish on the market, um, at this point, I decided to turn bearish. So at 9.57, I sold a 4.12 bear call and then I bought the 4.13 for protection, which gave me a credit of $39 times two. So if I go down to the five minutes chart, we can take a look at those two trades I just mentioned. At here, around 12.30, which is 9.30 my time, I saw this five minute candle and I thought that this could be the bottom because it could have went lower than the previous low, but it didn't. And there was a pretty big push up, which is indicated by this red wick. So I put in that bullish trade over here. But shortly after, you can see the market did not go past the 9 EMA, which is this green line, let alone the 21 EMA, the blue line. And you can see it actually fell below the previous low of the day. So that's when I started to get bearish. And that's when I got out of my positions and put in that new bear call position at 412, 413, which means as long as the market closes below 412, which is right here for the day, which it did, because it closed at 410.68, then I would make 100% of the premiums, which again was $39 times two minus commission. And then later on in the day, I had a bullish trade over here. That was $25 times three, so about $70 minus commission. And that was the opposite of a bear spread. That was a uh, put spread at 409, 407. So as long as SPY finished above 409, which is right here, then I would make 100% of that $70 basically. And that's what happened. Now near the end of the day, I went to bearish again over here because the market has been going down the entire day. And it's been a long time since the price has crossed over the blue line. So I thought it's probably gonna remain below the blue line for the rest of the day. Unfortunately, that trade did not work out and it was working fine until like the last five minutes, but then the market just shot up way past the blue line. So I had to get out of this position, unfortunately, and I took a little bit of a loss on that. That was this trade right here, three of these, because I entered here and then I got out here and here. So I made $35, but then I sold these for 42 and 40. So a little bit of a loss, but I could have made, you know, 35 times three had the SPY end of the day below 410, which if I go to the minute chart, 410 would be right here. So it was looking pretty good. SPY was below up until like the last eight minutes of the trading session because the day ends here at 4 p.m. and each candle represents a minute. So when this trade started to 
get in the money, I slowly got out of my position. And the reason I want to scale out of the position and not just sell all three at once is because you never know, we could get a spike up and then it hits resistance where it reached the top last time, like over here at, at around 3.30. Um, and then from there, it can go down again. But luckily, I didn't lose too much money on this one, maybe like $7 for each of these three positions. And finally, I put on a new trade over here for November 1st, which would be on Wednesday next week which is a bullish trade and I made $76 in premiums for this very wide spread. You can see it's a 402, 392 spread. And the reason is because by Wednesday, I don't think the market is gonna go down to 402. So I'm pretty comfortable with that position for now. And I have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to close the position if the market starts to go down a lot. So back to the daily chart, Wednesday would be right here, November 1st. So the reason I picked 402 as my strike is because if I draw a channel representing the direction of the stock market over the last couple of weeks, you can see, at least in the short term, this is why I chose Wednesday as the expiration date, because longer term, who knows? Um, but you can see the bottom of this channel is basically at 402. So if the market continues to remain bearish, then judging by the slope, of this sell-off, 402 is where I expect the lowest the market could go. Now, if it ends up breaking this channel, like on Monday, the market closes down here, then I'll have to get out of my position. I will be taking a loss on it, but I think on Monday or Tuesday, we're going to see a bounce and some kind of recovery from the market because we're kind of extended from the green line and especially the blue line, the 21 EMA. You can see from today's close, we are about 15 points away from the 21 exponential moving average. And that's happened before, like the last down leg stopped over here and that was only 13 points away. Another down leg over here, it actually ended the day up. So this would be the last down day and that's a 10.5. Even last year during like the market volatility, this would be the lowest day and that was a 13 point. So 15 points away from the 21 EMA seems like a pretty extreme distance. So I expect on Monday or Tuesday, we get an up day because we had like one, two, three very red days in the market in a row. Uh, medium term, where do I think the market is going? I think by the end of next week, we're still going to see lower prices in the SPY. Even if we do get a pop up, it is probably going to face some kind of resistance. And I'm looking at this larger channel over here which we broke out of before over here, but then bounced back into the channel. However, this time you can see this is a pretty meaningful breakdown of the channel. So even if we do get a bounce back, I think we're gonna see resistance first over here, which will correspond with the exponential moving average lines here, the green and the blue. And then if it gets through there, there's going to be another resistance at the 50 EMA, this red line. And even if the market manages to get past that and state goes up to 440, it's still within this bare channel. So after that, it could you know continue going lower. So until I see another larger channel like this going upwards, it looks like it's more likely than not we're gonna see lower prices in the medium term. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Good luck with your investments and until next time.